being accidentally fortunate is not the way to exist. This destiny business is a good insurance to handle your failure. What comes our way is not in our hands, but what we make out of it is one hundred percent in our hands. Sadhguru, I have worked very much hard to secure the first rank in common entrance examination and place me here. But my brother says me that, it's my destiny that has put me up here. Is it really my destiny or my hard work that placed me here? Where's your brother placed, huh? <laughs> See, uh, what people are generally calling as destiny is essentially what they end up creating unconsciously. When I say unconsciously, as you sit here right now, as everybody sits here right now, there is physical activity going on within the system. There is mental process, there is emotional activity, and of course the life energies are active. Every moment, they are taking in hundreds of inputs whether you're conscious or not conscious. So if I ask you a question, since this morning, from the time you woke up till now, of these four dimensions of activity, how much have you conducted consciously? What percentage do you think? Few things. How much percentage do you think? Twenty-five percent. You are very generous man <laughs> It's well below one percent. If you walk from there to there, there will be twenty-five different kind of smells that you're not conscious of but the body registers and records. There are hundred different kinds of sounds that the body registers that you're not conscious of. Like this throughout the day and night, in wakefulness and sleep, this is happening. When you are only conscious of less than one percent of your activity, definitely life will look like an accident. Hello? <laughs> when ninety-nine percent of the things that you're doing, you're doing unconsciously, definitely life look… will look accidental. If the accident… See, it is so happened, somebody fell off on the street and had a brain injury, after that suddenly, they started working their mathematics in a wonderful way. But that was only one. A thousand other people who cracked their skull, never recovered from that or they died or those who lived on, lived on much diminished. So being accidentally fortunate is not the way to exist. So whenever a pleasant accident happens, we say it's destiny. Some of you even say, God doing things to me. When did you make a partnership with him? I don't know. So, shall I tell you a story? Are you okay? This happened, Sherlock Holmes, you know Sherlock Holmes? And Watson went out camping and early morning, 3.30 a.m., Sherlock Holmes nudged Watson he opened his eyes, what? What do you see? he asked. Well, I see a clear sky and stars. What does it mean to you? He said, well, that means tomorrow is going to be a wonderful sunny day. Then he asked, what does it mean to you? He said, it means someone has stolen our tent. <laughs> So, we don't know what went missing and something may fall here and there by chance, but that's not the way life works. If a human being doesn't take it upon himself or herself to make their own destiny, they're still having an evolutionary problem. 
That is, they are still not yet fully there. Because being human means this, that we can conduct our life consciously. Being human means this, that we can craft our life the way we want. But this destiny business is a good insurance to handle your failure. Whenever you fail, destiny, destiny it's God's will <laughs> So this has been going on for a long time. This is not the fundamental nature of this culture. In this culture, we taught you right from ancient times, your life is your karma. Did we tell you or no? Nobody told you there is a God up there who will do things to you. We always told you, your life is your karma. This means your life is your making. No interstellar influence on you, it's you. Whatever, there are a million impacts on us, but what we make out of it is still us, isn't it? What is thrown at us is not in our hands. What comes our way is not in our hands, but what we make out of it is one hundred percent in our hands. I must tell you this. When I first uh, went to Coimbatore and uh, we started setting up the yoga center, this is a country like this, this is very strange. Now they are all clapping their hands. But at that time, simply rumors, oh, they're doing drugs, they're doing something else, they're here to kill the wildlife, they're killing tigers, they're killing elephants, all kinds of things, rumors going around, even media reporting these kind of things. Then uh, hundred prominent people in the town meet and then they say, this yoga is spreading like a disease. <laughs> These are the words. We have to do something. There some young hothead says, let's take a truckload of people and pull down the whole thing because the whole yoga center at that time was just thatch roof sheds. So they decided they want to come there and pull down the whole thing and be finished. Today, it is among the most prominent places in the country, okay <laughs> So, when they said this, there was an old man who is no more, a wise man. He said, see, you don't know who you're dealing with. I know this man. If you throw stones at him, he will build something out of those stones. <laughs> Don't throw stones at this man. <laughs> so, what comes at you, you cannot decide. But what you make out of it is your thing, isn't it? This is where your dint is. This is where you are to prove who you are. Because you can't decide what comes at you. But you can definitely decide what you make out of whatever comes at you.